The problem of the trade and export of import treasures belonging to the cultural heritage of Cyprus is not a new one. The indifference of conquerors, the poverty of the inhabitants, and the non-existence of laws until the beginning of British rule allowed various fortune hunters and grave robbers to amass priceless archaeological treasures and resell them to various museums abroad. The plunder of earlier periods, however, bears no comparison with the cultural destruction that took place with the invasion of Turkish troops in July 1974. The destruction and the trade in Cypriot antiquities was now large-scale and organized. The Turkish army and the occupying regime tolerated and in many cases assisted the pillage for the purpose of financial gain on the one hand and the alteration of the cultural character of the island on the other. Many finds by archaeological expeditions, exhibits in museums and also antiquities from private collections were illegally exported and flooded Europe. The archaeological sites that escaped the pillage have been left to the mercy of nature and the ravages of time, neglected, uncared for. Whatever managed to escape the clutches of illicit dealers and vandals has been left to slow decay. The legal owner is powerless to react because he is up against an occupying power that not only shows no respect for the archaeological monuments, but tries to reap financial gain by selling them. Stolen Cypriot antiquities flood foreign markets. The civilization of Cyprus is literally going under the hammer. Much of the mania of the occupying forces was directed against the churches, which were stripped of their treasures. Portable icons, liturgical vessels, vestments, and gospels took the road to the auction rooms of Europe. Many churches, after being stripped, were turned into barracks, stables, toilets, or recreation centers. The others have been destroyed or turned into mosques. The Turkish Cypriot press gave extensive coverage to the vandalism being carried on with the connivance of the occupying forces. The small church of Ayos Efemianos was built in about the 13th century and is a few kilometers outside the occupied village of Lisi. It is single-aisled, cruciform with a dome, and its interior was decorated with exceptional wall paintings of the 13th century. After the invasion, the Turkish dealer Aydin Dikman removed the wall paintings and then sold them to a family of Americans in Houston, Texas. Aydin Dikman was one of the biggest illicit dealers acting with the connivance and assistance of the occupying authorities. With the help of a ring of accomplices who he himself had had trained at universities abroad, he removed important wall paintings from the walls of churches and monasteries and sold them to dealers abroad. In his efforts to remove the wall paintings, a number of them were destroyed. One of the first monuments to be targeted by illicit dealers in antiquities was the monastery of Antivonitis. Inside the church were unique wall paintings of the 12th and 15th centuries, many of which were destroyed or removed by the occupying regime. After 1974, the Turks destroyed the icon screen and sold the icons, the central door, and the portable objects in the church. Most of the churches in the occupied areas have met a similar fate. The Church of the Virgin of Kanakaria is built on the ruins of the 5th century basilica, which was destroyed, probably by fire, during the periods of Arab raids. Of this church, only the sanctuary apse survives. To it was added the newer church, which is basilica in style with a dome. The apse was decorated with mosaics of the 6th century, which were removed after the Turkish invasion. They depicted the Virgin between the archangels and holding Christ in her lap. The whole representation was completed by 13 medallions which portrayed the 12 apostles and Christ crucified. These mosaics are among the few that follow the Byzantine technique that prevailed in Constantinople and that remain true to the Hellenistic tradition. Four of the sections of the mosaic were sold to an art dealer in Indianapolis, USA. After a legal battle in the American courts, the mosaics were returned to their rightful owner, the Church of Cyprus.
At an isolated spot in the Pendidactylos Mountains lies the monastery of Panagia Absintiotisa, which was under the administration of the Orthodox Patriarchy of Jerusalem. The monastery was built in about the 11th century and, according to medieval sources, was an important center of worship for thousands of the faithful. Later, the monastery was abandoned, but its church, which is the only hexagonal church in the whole of Cyprus, was restored by the Anastasios Leventis Foundation. In the interior of the church, the remains of some 12th century wall paintings had survived and restoration work had begun on these. Unfortunately, the Turks removed important wall paintings, while those they could not remove, they destroyed. The church of Panayir Pergaminiotisa near the occupied village of Akanthu was built in about the 11th century and belongs to the circumscribed cruciform style with dome. The church was built over the ruins of an older one, perhaps of the 6th century. Today, the doors of the church have been walled up by the occupying regime and no one can enter. The interior has been completely destroyed. Nothing remains standing. Important 12th century wall paintings such as that depicting Aya Anna praying were cut up to be sold in markets abroad. The illicit trade in antiquities, religious fanaticism, and also the attempt by the occupying regime to destroy and alter the cultural character of the occupied areas are some of the reasons which have led to the destruction of almost all the religious monuments. The cultural heritage of Cyprus is part of the world heritage which Turkey, with its henchmen, is trying to destroy. A great part of this heritage has been lost forever. There is a temple in ruined stands, fashioned by long-forgotten hands. Two or three columns and many a stone, marble and granite with grass o'ergrown. Out upon time, it will leave no more of the things to come than the things before. But enough of the past for the future to grieve, or that which hath been, and or that which must be. We must have seen our sons shall see, remnants of things that have passed away, fragments of stone reared by creatures of clay.